Welcome to the SaaS Ad Lab podcast where we interview the stories of SaaS company founders, entrepreneurs, and CEOs. My name is Luis. I'm the owner and founder of Phantom Agency, a digital marketing agency specializing in scaling SaaS companies. And today we have the pleasure of interviewing Guillaume Moubek, the founder and CEO of Lemlist. Thank you so much, uh, Guillaume, for being on the podcast today. It's a pleasure having you and learning more about your company, Lemlist, and what you've been able to do for a very saturated market, to be honest. And there's a lot of things out there. And uh, I do want to mention before we got into it, uh, Guillaume was very kind to provide anyone that's listened to the podcast where a discount for 30% off your first three months. And this is going to be available for two weeks. And the code is going to be in the description. It's going to be Lemless Loves Phantom, all caps. So make sure you check that out. And uh, why don't you tell us a little bit more about yourself? Yeah, thanks for uh, having me, Luis. <laughs> Super well, happy to be here. Uh, yeah, so my name is Guillaume. I, uh, I'm French, as you probably can Listen from the accents. Uh, we're based in Paris uh, between like two incubators. One is the one from my former business school and the other one is the one from uh, Zendesk. So a pretty well-known SaaS companies. Mm -hmm. We actually like work with also on specific features on Lemlist. That's awesome. And how did you get into the SaaS business? What, what was the first thing that, you know, really caught your attention or what was it that you were trying to solve as a problem that you noticed? So, yeah. So basically, initially, uh, I had like a, a growth agency and we were basically doing acquisition for uh, B2B companies and some B2B SaaS as well. Um, and we were doing a lot of email outreach. And what I realized is that all the tools out there were really like all the same. First of all, I found that the user interface and user experience for most tools uh, were really complicated the platforms were a bit slow and so on and I was like this is not possible you know like uh -huh. we're in 2018 <laughs> like I mean we need to find something about that and one trick we used when we were doing email outreach was actually to use like images and sometimes like personalized images and we had like really amazing results mm -hmm. where we had actually like uh, up to like two times more replies okay so we awesome. I started like um, basically working with uh, two other guys, two brothers who basically have grown like uh, two tech guys mm -hmm. who basically grow like a lot of SaaS companies. So I think they have like, uh, they worked maybe on like, I don't know, five or six projects. And wow. uh, in the end, like uh, we started working together and we saw that it was like working pretty well. So our vision was really like, okay, it's either we launch really quickly and we test as fast as possible. So what a better way to launch than going on product hunt. Right. And uh, we launched there, ended up number one, got like uh, hundreds of users. Uh, and it's, it has only been, you know, one month when we launched on Product Ten. So having like so many users and so many feedback was really amazing. That's awesome. And from there, you know, like we, we basically started scaling, scaling and scaling. And it's going pretty well so far. <laughs> good, good. Congratulations. And what were, what were some of the, the, and we talked about this before we started, right? And, and you mentioned that people like to, to, make sales with the friends and that really hit home for me and essentially what what does lemless do to to showcase you know the, the fact that we're not just reaching out to robots or anything like that these are people that like to be treated with with respect and, and kindness and so how is lemless doing that for for people you know that are currently using email lists and things like that so how is lemless hitting that yeah. So basically, like what we've realized, because uh, we're really interested, like we know we are in a saturated market. So our goal was also like, I mean, and is also, you know, to always look at, at what's going on. You know, mm -hmm. we really focus on our product, but we like to see like what other platforms are doing as well. Right. And what we realized is that if you look at sales, uh, you would see that people are always mentioning about like leads, qualified leads, marketing qualified leads. And actually, if you look at the sales funnel, you consider people kind of money bags, you know, right. like uh, the, the closer they get to the point where they become like a potential customer, mm -hmm. the higher their value increase. Right. But the truth by doing that is you're actually totally dehumani dehumanizing cell. Mm -hmm. And for us, it's really important, you know, to have this human relationship, make people understand that they're reaching out to potential friends, as you said. So right. basically it would help them get in a mindset where they're not going to be spamming but where they were spending more time on personalization. Mm -hmm. And that's actually why we build entirely Lemlist toward ultra personalization, where you can actually decide to personalize each message, even though you still get a lot of automation. 
And that's why also we've decided to change entirely the wording on the platform. So now there is no recipients lead or prospect. It's only called buddies to be, as in B2B as well, you know, but still because you, you want to do business with friends and you want to do business with people, you know, that you consider that you will bring value to you. And, uh, and that's really what I like about B2B actually, you know, in the end. Yeah, absolutely. And, and I think relationships are a huge part of it. I, you know, in the, the time that I've been in business, I don't, I don't think I've ever seen a relationship on a B2B, uh, you know, standpoint that if, if you're not close, usually like, I mean, they might stay, but it's not going to be a great relationship. And whenever they see, you know, a new product, it, they're going to go to the new one just because there's no relationship. There's no friendship or anything keeping them with you. Um, and that's one of the biggest points, especially with Lemless, I think that you hit very, very well is the fact that you are building relationships. You're not building a list of leads, uh, you know, that have a lifetime value or whatever it might be. Right. So you're actually creating relationship with these people. And I think that's awesome. Now you did mention that you were on product hunt and you scaled super fast. So what were some of the issues that you encountered when doing that? Obviously, you know, growth is great, but with growth comes a lot of other problems as well. And, and why don't you tell us a little bit more about what were some of those issues that, you know, other SaaS founders might experience that could learn from something maybe that happened to you or something that you saw that was coming and how did you approach that so that it didn't end up, you know, in a bad way? Yeah. So actually like um, after product hunt, as I was mentioning, we had a lot of users and we were still in beta at that time. And what we decided also is to launch on a platform called AppSumo, where in a sense you offer like a specific deal to a lot of people uh, for a limited time. Mm -hmm. uh, and we grew basically with, uh, with let's say like AppSumo from a couple of hundred up to like more than 5,000 customers. That's insane. And in, yeah, and in, in such a short amount of time, you know, with a lot of agency, entrepreneurs, startup, SMEs, which is definitely our target in the end. Right. But the thing is like, um, when you launch on such platforms, you realize that you're attracted such a wide variety of different persons mm -hmm. that in the end, you're gonna have people asking you for very different things. Mm -hmm. Like some people would like to use your tool for a very specific usage and you would need to modify your tool to match that usage. So the big risk I saw when you're scaling fast and because to give you like uh, our company we're like i'm talking a lot to my users like most of the time i'm either on messenger because people add me on facebook or on linkedin or directly on the chat you know right so and that's that here, relationship building you're creating yeah. customers which it's awesome yeah definitely and i like doing this because i like to understand how they use our product what the problem what the issues and that's also why we're making like really such an easy to use like tool and the thing is the problem when you have like such a variety of or different typology of customers is mm. that sometimes you can focus not on the right targets and you would make changes that would actually be a bit negative for most of users. But you know, like in the end, like, so in the end, I would say that when building a SaaS, like I really, what, I mean, what we're really good at is the product. Um, and I'm lucky because like my CTO is really experienced on that and that's really, really a good idea. But the, the, the risk was really like to take too many feedbacks and try to make something too complicated. Mm -hmm. I think like one, what, I mean, the danger of most SaaS is trying to be, to do everything. And make it happy. Everything, yeah, exactly. Like to make your customers happy. Sometimes you just, you just have to say no. And even if it's difficult, you need mm -hmm. to say no and say, okay, this is my product in the end. This is where I want to take it and what I'm going to do to take my product where I want, you know, right. because otherwise, you know, like we have a, a product that is really like self-service, like people, they come, they pay. And you know, like uh, if they have a problem, they know where to find me. We answer really quickly on the chat. Mm -hmm. And even though we have like a real, like, as I said, you know, it's like thousands of customers in the end, you know, like most people can use it without talking to me. You know, there are videos right. or tutorials and so on. We try to make everything friendly. Mm -hmm. We also have a community on Facebook, uh, which is growing. It's like uh, most of our users are there, but there are like uh, maybe like um, 1,200 people awesome. on Facebook. So asking questions. Uh, I'm also trying to bring a lot of value, you know, to my user by broadcasting one email template per week mm -hmm. where I analyze it and I explain like how to use it. Uh, why is it working? How can you create it? And so on. Just to always, you know, try to, to bring community to the, to bring value, sorry, to the community. 
That's awesome. And you touched on something that I actually wanted to talk about, especially with scaling super fast like you did, essentially with user onboarding um, sometimes. And you, you did this while you were in beta. So did you already have all the, all the tutorials on how to use a product when you had the thousands of users come in? Or is that something that hit you and you didn't even know? <laughs> yeah, that's a second option. <laughs> we had like so many requests, like same for the, the, hef, like the, the help, uh, help section, like the uh -huh. FAQ, like we had to build it, man. It was like, uh, <laughs> we had no choice. Otherwise we, we would have probably died, you know? <laughs> like, yeah. So many questions and so on. And a, a tool that I really like and that is free, it's actually called Loom. So Loom allows you to, yeah, I mean, it's so nice, you know, like even on support, when I'm doing support, sometimes mm -hmm. I just like record myself, show how to do it. It takes like 30 seconds or yeah. a minute, you know, to create a video. And then it's so much clearer than spending the time to take screenshot, put the arrows yeah. and stuff, you know, like the old way. Like you just put a video and everyone like likes to watch videos. So it's, it's pretty easy, straightforward and helpful. Loom, Loom is awesome. And if, and if anyone doesn't know what that is and you need to show people how to do things that require <laughs> yeah. a lot of emails, uh, make sure to check out Loom. Um, obviously, we're getting a little shout out on here, but it's a great, it's a great tool. Um, yeah. so with that being said, uh, and onboarding and creating things like that on the fly because you didn't have those in, in, you know, in place, what would you recommend for someone that is in beta and maybe doesn't necessarily have feedback from people so they don't even know, right? that they're going to have those types of questions. How should it approach a situation like that? Yeah, like, I mean, to be honest, like the, I think it's, it's not really worth building like a lot of help questions and so on, like our FAQ before you actually have users. Mm -hmm. To me, like you should actually spend time with your users. And if you see that they don't understand something when using the product, then like build a, a question about that, like a, an answer about that. Mm -hmm. And I mean, being, you know, like uh, too much in advance, I think it's a bit useless, but because sometimes you're going to create content that no one would read. So what's right. the point? You know? And what, what do you think about content marketing and putting things out? I actually got a couple of Facebook ads after I went on your website and I thought they were great. So, <laughs> <laughs> uh, what what yeah, do like, you think about doing content marketing to get people at the very top of the funnel, right? So you're not essentially, yeah. you don't want to get them like, hey, like try our product today, go buy. Like you're actually providing value. And essentially yeah. like some of the things that you mentioned, like they could go right and try them on whatever tool they're using. Um, and maybe it might be more manual work because you've systemized everything where it's pretty much automated, um, yeah. like the personalization things like that. But if they really wanted to take a very non scalable approach, they could do it on their own, but you are providing value in those videos. Um, so essentially what is it that you're trying to accomplish with as far as content marketing goes? Yeah, to be honest, like I think content marketing, um, it's something you have to have on the side, like all, all the time. Like, mm -hmm. first of all, I think writing really helps you put your ideas out there and also structure everything the right way. Mm -hmm. Like to me, there are so many founders who are really knowledgeable about specific industry, but never write. Right. They have like content teams, but they are doing like a less good job because right now, to be honest, like, um, it's simple, like when I know something or when I know a topic or when I want to talk about a topic, I just write an article about it, you know? Mm -hmm. And that way, you know, it, puts, it can put you, you know, as an expert on a specific domain, like in a few months and which happened to me, you know, like because I got like interviews and so on about cold emails and, and it goes pretty fast, you know, in the end. Like it's, um, it's something, you know, that uh, every founder should do as a side. And also, you know, when people have questions, like my first articles were pretty technical and also kind of fun. And mm -hmm. I was talking about email deliverability. Like how do you set up all the technical things for your G Suite, for uh, how awesome. to basically check your IP addresses, as they've been blacklisted, how to get whitelisted, all these type of things, making them a bit fun and basically making them as simple as possible so your grandmother could answer. <laughs> and that's like that no but seriously that's that's, that's yeah. really like something that's, that's, that's a great way to put it i mean <laughs> yeah yeah um, that's 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 the best way to put it to <laughs> i could not make it simpler than that right so yeah exactly <laughs> uh, that's awesome and then when you're talking about you know a saturated industry and, and having a ton of players out there have you and you did mention that you look at what other people are doing and and how do you how do you manage you know to to make sure that you're always innovating and always coming out with new products that maybe someone isn't already working on. Obviously like there's a lot of people 
you know, and there's probably tools out there that you might not know of that are going to come out of nowhere and you have something revolutionary that might take everything and, and just, you know, um, you get interest. Right. So, so what yeah, are yeah, you doing? Um, to, I, to be honest, I think it's, uh, there are two things when uh, growing a company, uh, one branding to me is something you need to start from day one. Mm -hmm. Um, I would advise and what's working really well for us. It's basically like I do what I like. So when I'm creating content, I like that. When I'm talking to my user, I like that. And if someone doesn't like it and doesn't like uh, the way I'm talking, the way I'm putting emojis everywhere, the way I'm saying love all the time to my user, sending hearts and stuff, it's fine. That's just who I am, you know? Right. And I, I want to be with people kind of like me as my user or who share like the same mindset. Mm -hmm. And I think that's like basically what would create a brand in the end, you know? It's making your brand likable and making your product likable. So whenever, because like right now what we have, at first we were looking at others' tools and so on, but now our own users are actually doing market research for us. When someone has brought like something super innovative, we have people recording their free trial on our competitors <laughs> and saying, guys, I really like this tool and I really like what they're doing. Look what we can do. And we're like, oh, okay, that can be a great idea, you know? Like, yeah. so in the end, we have like so many people, you know, who actually like us, like they prefer using us, obviously. Mm -hmm. um, I mean, not obviously, but I mean, that's what happened in the end. So yeah. they are like really like happy to share and be part. I think you really need to include your users. Yeah. As part of, as part of the evolution of your SaaS, mm -hmm. explain when some when you don't want to do something, just explain it. You know, like people are not stupid. Like if you say no to someone, he's not gonna be saying like, okay, I'm gonna churn. That's over. Right. Uh, he's gonna say, okay, I understand. I mean, you make your point. Like it makes sense. You know, explaining mm -hmm. to people when you say no, it's like so nice because in the end you see that. I mean, okay, like we're not kids. If we say if someone <laughs> tell us no, like we're not gonna start crying and go away. You know. Right. Right. And, um, yeah, that's, I would say that includes, you know, really your user inside your SaaS and inside the evolution and the story mm -hmm. would actually what make people stick and what make people recommend you, you know? Definitely. And that's, that's great. I've never heard of anyone doing something like that to other companies. So that means you've definitely, you know, done a really good job on creating relationships with your customers and really bringing, you know, a community together. I think that's really what it takes nowadays to create a good brand and a, new, and a good company is having something of value. And that's a lot of a lot, a lot of what people miss out. They're only out there chasing, you know, I just want to get as many users as possible to start seeing like my numbers in the bank account increase and whatever, right? And I think actually wanting to create something where people like to spend time and, and, and they enjoy, you know, whether it's talking to you or talking to other users of the same product, I think yeah. building community is extremely important. Um, and you mentioned having a Facebook page and things like that. And, and, and one of the cool things, a uh, Facebook group, sorry. One of the yeah. cool things about that is that anyone can an ask any questions and someone has already been using the product, right? For maybe six months ahead of them. So they've learned a lot of things and you don't even have to hop in and answer those questions. Like they're pretty much helping each other out. Um, and yeah, I exactly awesome yeah. about something yeah. like that. And, uh, and you did mention churn. So what are you doing to currently, you know, try to keep it as low as possible yeah so for churn like uh my goal is really like to produce content mm -hmm. uh, because i think like i mean to me b2b is very simple it's all about roi mm -hmm. if i'm using a tool that bringing myself like more money and i'm happy with it then yeah. i'll keep you you know Absolutely. people who are churning from the list are people who are basically not seeing a great roi and if they're not seeing a great roi they are like different hypotheses but one can be they're not successful because they don't know how to do it mm -hmm. they don't know how to write quality emails they don't know how many steps they need to put they don't know like and my goal is really like to push some good content to make people successful that educate uh, so, them on what they exactly need. exactly yeah, so awesome. educate as much as possible mm -hmm. and uh, just to basically like yeah find the have people stay longer wanted to just like get get better and so on yeah that's great. That's awesome. And as far as actually getting feedback from people, um, you mentioned, obviously, these people are coming to you with feedback on their own. They're asking questions, asking you, you know, features and things like that. But are you doing anything that is more of a broadcast kind of approach where you're actually asking people um, if there's something that they're looking for? Are they, are they currently missing any, you know, features on the product um, or to rate it, maybe even like share it with a friend and so on? Uh, you mean like uh, regarding roadmap, like sharing ideas on 
Yeah, something like that, or maybe like an NPS core where they tell you like, how likely am I to actually, you know, share this with my friends and, and recommend it to someone else? Yeah, like the, we, we started like doing some NPS thing, but I mean, we're still setting this up like at the moment. I mm -hmm. think because we actually have like a very easy one-to-one -one conversation on the chat, uh -huh. people directly tell us like what they like or what they dislike. Sometimes we even have like a love message when we send newsletter. Yeah. Like people saying, oh, I really love that. Like, I'm super happy. Thanks for sharing and all this type of things. So for us, that's still like a, a good fuel, you know, like uh, for creativity, <laughs> get more, more yeah. uh, examples and so on. Yeah. That's awesome. That's super awesome. And uh, if you had, if we're getting a little bit closer to the, to the 30 minutes. So if you had a yeah. good uh, piece of advice, you know, for any entrepreneur or SaaS founder out there, um, what would you say to, to, to make sure that they do early on instead of wait, you know, until time passes by? I really, I, I would say to like the, I think that's a pretty, like everyone would say that, but it's like do things that don't scale. Like seriously, I think automation is really great, but you know, personalization and automation can go together, but you still need to spend time. Like, you know, if you want to build like proper relationship, get to know your users, mm -hmm. get to know your potential customers, spend time doing that job because in the end, it will help you nail your messaging, not only in your sales pitch, right. but also when you write copy, when you send emails and on your website. And once you got that, then you know it's, uh, yeah, I mean, you still got work, obviously, but you know. Is that, is, <laughs> is that something they can maybe scale using Lemlist? <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Probably, yeah. <laughs> yeah. No, I'm kidding. That's awesome. That's great advice. And uh, what about a favorite book? Do you have any books out there that you absolutely love that have helped you shape your company um, the way that you've done? Obviously, is super successful so far. And uh, and what's what's a book that you'd recommend for anyone that's looking to create a company or or already in the in the early stages? Uh, the book that I really liked uh, was um, Predictably Irrational by uh, Dan Ariely. It's basically explaining like why people do things that they, basically how, why, do, why would you buy something? You know, mm -hmm. you believe that this is totally irrational, but actually the consumer science behind it can always explain, you know? Right. And so, I think this is interesting, yeah. It's, it's more of a psychology, uh, psychology yeah, book. Yeah, kind of like psychology of consumers. I think it's important to understand like all those books, you know, like uh, Influence or, you know, like uh, Robert Saldini. Yeah, exactly. You know, it's all about like, if you understand, like in a business, you know, like something I don't like today, it's basically whenever someone is like young and a CEO, it mm -hmm. tends to have a lot of media cover. Right. So people really assume that to be successful when you're a CEO, you need to be young, which mm -hmm. is totally untrue. Like the average of successful CEOs, it's like 45, 50 years old, you know, right. and why people don't ask why, but the reason is like, when you're 45 years old, you had time to make yourself such a huge network of friends, of influential people that it's much easier to launch a business Absolutely. and be successful. That's true because in the end, the first person that you're going to talk to when you want to launch a business are your network. Mm -hmm. And your network when you grow up is basically like more CEOs, more CMOs, more influential people. So once you sign, like say, like if your friend is working, like I don't know, at Zendesk or at Salesforce and is a CMO, CMO there, and you do a product for them. If they become your customers from day one, you already have like, I don't know, 10, 20 K MRR. So that's pretty decent, you know, yeah. <laughs> and then you can scale. So definitely I think like understand how building relationship works and why it's important to spend time doing that. Mm -hmm. And then from there, like uh, expand. <laughs> that's awesome. And as far as the, you know, the one thing that really helps you get your product from nothing you know right right off the bat starting to where it is right now other than, than product hunt and things like that what would you say was that one thing that really put put the you know the tipping point to creating the 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 product that you have now what are the user base that you have today i think it's uh it's all about team and execution mm -hmm. like in the end because your ideas uh, can always evolve like people are stealing ideas from each other like it's been like once we launched on product hunt we had like two Indian guy like trying to do exactly the same as us, you know? And yeah. I was like, what the fuck? <laughs> like, seriously, like a week after they were or something like that. So I'm like, man, like it's fine in the end and in the long term, it would be execution and you can only execute with a good team. So make sure your co-founders or your team is very solid 
because entrepreneurship is not like roses and flowers. Like you're yeah. going to have ups and downs. Absolutely. And when you're down, you really need people, you know, with you so you can just go up again. And what if it's someone without a team? What if they're starting on completely by themselves? Is it the same thing? Do they still have to, you know, get their ideas and execute, right? Put your head down and just get to work. Yeah, exactly. At some point, like listening to advices and stuff is really good. Like having mentors, it's nice, mm -hmm. but not too many because you would see that actually you can have two very good mentors that will tell you absolutely two different things. Right. In the end, if you're launching a product or a company, make sure you like what you do. Make sure to be yourself and true to yourself mm -hmm. because in the end, you're going to have to work during hours where you don't want to work. <laughs> so if you're not true to yourself, you're just going to get burned out and just yeah. like totally like give up, you know? So I think that's, that's a huge point is just enjoy what you're doing. If you're not enjoying yeah, definitely. Doing, then there's really no point, like leave it to someone else. That's if, if someone else is enjoying it and you're not enjoying it, they're going to do a lot better. Right. Then, then what? Yeah, that's for sure. Yeah. So I think that's, that's awesome advice. And <laughs> are there any questions that you have for me uh, about anything really? Yeah. Like, uh, what's your goal with the podcast? Like how big do you want to grow it or uh, what's the next steps? <laughs> At this point, I, I really want to just get, you know, to the point where I get to interview a big, a big, uh, a big name in the industry, whether it's like the CEO of HubSpot uh, and things like that, just someone huge. Um, I think it's going to take a while. Definitely. You know, it's not going to be super easy to create a name for myself, but so far I, I've honestly had a lot of a better response that I, that I imagined. Uh, and I'm super That's happy nice. about that. And it's, you know, thanks to people like you that want to get on the podcast and share their story and, and, and really try to help other SaaS company uh, founders, et cetera. So the goal is just to, to learn more about people, learn more about the industry and try to help you guys as well, you know, with whatever it is that you have questions. And, and like you said, uh, do things that are not scalable and create relationships. So whether that it is through a podcast or messaging back and forth on Facebook at two in the morning, whatever it is, um, you know, it's, it's, it's something that I enjoy uh, a lot. And I think it's, it's valuable to create relationships. And I, I mean, if you think about it, I, I forgot, maybe like a month ago, I started doing the podcast um, and I didn't really know anyone overseas. Right. And now I've had, I feel like I have friends <laughs> all over the world and it's only like about one month in. So <laughs> it's, it's absolutely awesome. It's a great feeling. And uh, really it's just getting to know, to know people like yourself. Awesome. Yeah. I love it. <laughs> Thank you. And uh, so with that being said, uh, I do want to say it was a great interview. It was very cool having you here, Guillaume, and telling you much about Lemlist and what you're able to do, um, you know, for, for companies that are currently trying to reach out to more people in a more personable way. Obviously, those are the things that get to someone um, seeing, you know, an, an image or a video with, with your name on it. It's not something that you get every day. You just get a plain text email with nothing on it. Um, and it just says, hey, like, I want to sell you something, right? And yeah, exactly. That's not, that's not something people like, uh, it's probably just going to spam anyway. <laughs> so, uh, um, just make sure that, that, you know, that you're doing things like you said that aren't scalable and, and be personable, um, create relationships and things like that. So, um, again, thank you for being in the podcast. Uh, it's always great learning more about yourself and, and more about the people like you that are creating companies. And for anyone that's listening, I really appreciate you taking the time of your day, uh, to be here with us today and uh, listen to stories like Guillaume's and, and, and other great people out there. Uh, and Guillaume, where can people find you, find you online? Uh, online, you can find me like uh, on LinkedIn. Uh, we can put like all the profiles like on the links of the no, description. No. So like LinkedIn, uh, Facebook on the email outreach family group mm -hmm. uh, or directly on the chat on the website. <laughs> like, awesome. Yeah. So we'll get all those, <laughs> we'll get all those links uh, on the descriptions on, on YouTube, Facebook, et cetera, you know, wherever it goes. Uh, and you can find me at Instagram, Camacho.ftm and also phantom.agency. Uh, and if you're a SaaS founder, entrepreneur, CEO, make sure you go to the group. And if you want to be on the podcast, just let us know. We'll be glad to have you and, and hear about your story, whatever you have to share. And uh, I challenge every single one of you to go out there and like Guillaume said, start executing. Ideas aren't going to get you anywhere. Uh, get the idea, put it on a piece of paper and uh, just start doing whatever it is you need to do, um, you know, to, to create your company and, and, and start changing people's lives. So uh, <laughs> thank you everyone and uh, have a very nice rest of your day. Thank you guys. Thank you. Bye-bye.